Hi guys and welcome to another Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition video. Today I wanted to give you a look at the scenario editor. Um, I'm going to go right back to the main menu just so you can see where this starts off. So right here at the bottom left we have editors and once you jump into the editor menu create scenario is what you want to start out with. And after a quick loading screen it'll bring you to this blank green map. Up on the top left you have all the buttons that you're going to be using and then back here on the bottom left um, you have a few other options as well. So I don't have anything planned specifically for this video but I'm gonna set up a little scenario. Um, everything's pretty similar to the original Age of Empires 2 but I'm sure I'll find some new additions along the way and then after that we'll test the scenario and see how it goes. Um, so what we're gonna start off with is um, we're gonna go back to map actually and we're going to create a random map. So this is going to be a map similar to what you might play in a rated game, a 1v1, 2v2 kind of team game. Um, we're going to set it for a 2v2, so we're going to put it medium size, and the map we're going to make, let's see, um, I think I might start, what sounds interesting, Gold Rush could be cool. I want to do something that already has somewhat of a theme to go for, and then we'll kind of build off of it. Um, I was thinking, I'm thinking all the maps in the map pool, but I, none of them really have much of a personality um, that I'm getting anything off. Actually, Oasis might be interesting. So there might be something in the middle that they have to go for or um, something they can play off of. So let's go ahead and click generate map and we'll see what it looks like. So it's generating a two player map. We just see the red base here on the mini map and the blue base. So let's go over to the players menu and we are going to bump that up to four players. Or no, um, is that that player? Yeah, so this is what player you're selecting for all of these other options. And then this is how many players we're having. And uh, you can scroll down to have more than four players. Starting age, we're gonna make it simple. We're gonna make, uh, you know what? We're gonna make it feudal age. Um, and we're gonna give everyone 500 of each resource to start off with. Unfortunately, tab doesn't work to go through these menus. Um, the original version of the scenario editor was also pretty badly designed in terms of UI. I mean, it just had a lot of flaws. Um, this already looks better just because um, everything looks better, so to speak, in DE. But um, there's obviously room for improvement still. So let's go back to player one here, and then we can either make this AI or either. And there's an option for locking Civ. Um, if this option is selected, players will not be able to change the civilization when setting a good game. So it can be useful just to give someone a Civ because their buildings will reflect that. So if we make player one Italians, you can see that their building um, looks different. Um, what we're also gonna do is change this to a non-slow map. So if we didn't want a snow map, we could just click generate map again. And now it's going to remake it for a four players since we just added two more players. So now we have everyone's base in here. Um, this doesn't look like a very fair generation. We're going to regenerate it and now we're on desert. All right, um, that's too bright on my eyes. Let's go back to a, f a come on, there we go, green map. I like this very much and I have a few mods on here. Um, like removes extra uh, vegetation and such and small trees on as well right now you can find those in the mods section and uh, let's say we don't want them to start with a lot of food but we want a lot of ore so we're gonna go to the units tab and we're gonna delete these guys we'll give them leave them with one boar and yeah we'll just leave them with the boars okay and we're gonna delete the other food uh, maybe they can start by going to the berries. I don't really know how the most optimal scenario would start out, but we're just going to do this for now because I want to keep this fairly quick and brief for you just to give you an idea of the scenario editor. Um, some extra here. We'll leave the ibexes as well. So if we wanted to create more stone and gold piles, this is a question that comes up a lot on the scenario editor. You have to select Gaia, then go to other, and then you see a ton more show up. So in Oasis, there is no deep fish, but we're going to put a load of them in here. Um, we're going to put some salmon for T90 and his fans. 
first one was Dorado. I think that should be good. And then if we come down to stone, I believe is what it's under. Um, let's see. Yeah, scrolling's still a bit slow, but it's better than it was originally. And the scroll speed is better than it was in the original game. Stone mine, here we go. So there is your stone. And we could even make an island in the middle with extra resources. Um, we are going to have to delete these. Actually, I think we might just be able to paint over them. So we're going to go back over to blank map. Um, or no. Right, we don't go to map, we go to terrain. That's right. So we have a d few different options here for what our brush is going to make. Um, this is already a much nicer. The original one was like four tiles or four lines high so you, it was really hard to find exactly what you were looking for because they weren't in alphabetical order either you just kind of memorize them so we're gonna make um three by three beach yeah this looks decent oh i guess we're gonna make access to the water um let's try to make this so it's a amphibious terrain to get there so we're gonna go down to shallows do, do, do shallows and that way boats can go all the way around. You can try to control it with your um, boats. This person's gonna have a much easier time cutting in than this person, um, but maps are never fair. So let's hope you get blue. I guess if blue is host, host will get the advantage there. Um, and then we're gonna go back to our units, go to Gaia, and we're already there. It remembered where we were. And we're gonna put a bunch of stone. Oh, we can't put anything on that terrain, so let's change the terrain type two grass two everyone's favorite grass because it's the greenest the other ones have a little bit of dirt and compost built into it and then we go back over to units and click stone mine again and we should be able to build stone mines as much as we want till we go off into the water so there you go players can cut in they can get a bit more fish they can get a bit more stone they can control the mil middle of their melee by um, using harbors. The ideas are just coming to me already. Red's map looks pretty trash with these hills in the front. I'm going to turn into casting the game if I compare everyone's bases. So what else could we do? Well, we can put down some buildings. Um, we already looked at the map terrain. We could change the elevation as well. Um, so 7 elevation is the highest. If we want to make Blue's map a little bit less fair, we can put all his golds on it. Giant hills that are hard for him to keep and contest. Um, that's weird, that went down in elevation. So apparently you can also get elevation 8, but that's not an option here. Um, what? I don't know what these buttons here do. Um, it doesn't seem... Okay, we're kind of ruining our map just for testing purposes, but it doesn't seem like those do anything. Let's go... Oh, I see, it's for the other menus, but it doesn't go away once you get into elevation. That's odd. I don't understand what map copy would do. So it looks like you'd be able to copy a part of the map and then paste it again. Let's try that over here actually. So if we select, let's say, well, we have to get a bigger tile so we can see what we're doing. Let's just copy this. And we'll click copy mode. We'll say rotate left. And then, whoa, it did it. And it rotated our little stone pile. That's very interesting. I don't know what use that could have. Um, I can't think of any right now. But that's definitely an interesting option. And then you can erase um, though I haven't used that before, so I'm not going to go into it. It doesn't look that useful. Um, we're on Gaia. So player one starting feudal age, no one else is. You know what? Let's turn player age player one back to dark age. And then um, everyone has their default civilizations. Oh, they're set at random for default. That works. Let's go to units. So um, let's give these guys a few different units to start off. We have heroes. Let's give Charlemagne to green. Make sure we're on player, what is green? Player three. There you go, green. You have Charlemagne. Player two is going to get, and check this out. You can also use the arrow keys and scroll through all the units. Tell me one, three, two, one. You get Pope Leo the first. Um, it might be totally terrible in this scenario. I'm not sure. And then um, 
Pachuti for player one, and then you'll see the heroes in Age of Empires one or two definitive edition have a little gold symbol around them. I think that's a very nice addition. Player three is gonna get, or player four is gonna get Jun. And yeah, that looks good. Diplomacy, we can set whether they're friendly or foe. So we can put player one and two to be allies to each other. Each other. Um, boom. And then player three and four are gonna be allies to each other Oops. as well. And then we're going to go ahead and lock teams because we don't want them to turn on each other and look like lock teams is set for everyone once you set it for one person. Global victory setting. This is something you set normally in the game room in a game. Um, standard conquest. Conquest is the most popular. But of course you can have custom scenarios where like you collect all the relics or you have full exploration. Um, so this looks like it's all pretty standard. Um... Oh, you can disable buildings and stuff. This is kind of stuff I don't play around with too often because I don't make too many scenarios. I usually use the scenario editors to make my videos. Um, cinematics. Triggers. Triggers is something that's very interesting that I'm going to go over real quick. So let's say if Joan... So I'm going to make a new set trigger that's going to be at the start of the game. So we're going to call this start game. It's going to trigger state starting state is on so when the game starts it's already on it doesn't have to be triggered on by anything else and we'll put looping to no we'll say display as objective just for fun um, and we'll say look at Joan and the new effect on the effects list um, wow I think they've added more it's going to set player visibility and it's going to make player 4 visible to us or well uh, yeah we'll say visible so hopefully we should be able to see player 4's point of view if we're playing as player 1 or as as player 1 yeah and then we're going to change the view so it's going to make us look at player 4 um, right at the start of the game um, and the reason it's red is that we haven't activated this effect yet, or there's something wrong with the trigger, or technically the effect, this isn't a trigger, this is an effect. And the reason why this is red is we haven't actually set a location for us to look at. So we wanna look at Joan right at the start of the match. So we're gonna click set location, click on the map, click go to location just to make sure it will put us in this position and it looks all right. And we're gonna set a condition right at the beginning and the condition is going to be that um, we can set a timer, so that's a 10 second timer, and we'll set another condition if we can find something that's interesting. I wonder if there's a population, like if yellow made another villager, it would show. Um, no, it doesn't look like population's an option. I wonder if I can wait until, no I don't want to wait until they get loom. So we're going to remove this second condition by just clicking delete once we have it selected. So now this should work if we go into test. So it's loading up like a game just as if we're going to start playing the scenario. I believe I should be playing player one unless something's changed in this version of the scenario editor. That's the default that we would be playing. If you guys have any questions about anything in the scenario editor, um, I can leave them in the comment and I can try to answer them in the comments. So yeah, we're starting with blue and in 10 seconds, let me start queuing up some villagers. Oh, look at that. We see Joan and she's visible all, all of a sudden. And now we can see blue for the rest of the game. So if you wanted to play with your friends and um, you wanted to see what they were doing all the time, but that you only wanted to play the one map you generated, you could have that setting and be able to see exactly what your friend's doing at the beginning of the match. Um, there's obviously an easier option to do that and that's just to select the um, view allies setting in the game room while you're making the lobby. Um, yeah, so that's that. I covered, I think, most of the important thing between triggers and uh, finding where stone and gold is that's under Gaia and then other. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment and I can address them in either in the comment or a future video.